Hey everybody, welcome to Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So this is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In episode 19, we learned how understanding mapping could help you optimize the performance of Elasticsearch while saving disk space. So mapping is a process of defining how a document and its fields are indexed and stored. And it does that by defining the field types of your documents. And depending on its type, each field is stored and indexed accordingly. Today, we'll learn about how the string fields are mapped in Elasticsearch. In other words, how Elasticsearch assigns field types to string fields and what these string field types are used for. All right, let's get started. Today's episode builds on the material covered in episode 19. So before you get started, be sure to watch the previous episode to get the full context. Okay, so let's get organized here. I have two windows open side by side. On the left, I have the Kibana console. On the right, I have the part five repo. And this repo contains all the requests we'll be sending throughout this episode. And I've scrolled down to the index and string section. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. In the last episode, we indexed a document. We also sent a request to view the dynamic mapping that Elasticsearch created for us. So let's take a look at our document again. And you'll see that a lot of these fields, such as botanical name, produce type, and country of origin contain strings. Now let's take a look at the mapping here. And if we examine the type of these string fields, such as botanical name, you'll see that these fields have been typed as both text and keyword by default. Now, text and keyword are two kinds of string field types. In Elasticsearch, every string gets mapped twice as a text field and as a keyword multi-field by default. And each field type is primed for different types of requests. So let's go over the difference between the two. So the text field type is designed for full text searches. And one of the benefits of full text search is that you could search for individual search terms in a non case sensitive manner. Whereas keyword is designed for exact searches, aggregations and sorting. So this is useful when you're searching for original strings. And depending on what type of request you want to run on each field, you could assign the type as either text, keyword or both. Okay, so let's go back to our mapping. So if you scroll down to the field description, you'll see that it has been mapped twice as text and keyword. So let's focus on text first. So let's scroll down to that section. So when the field is mapped as text, the content of the field passes through an analyzer. So let's take a look at the field description in our document and focus on the last sentence. These pineapples are sourced from New Zealand. Now the same sentence is shown in the repo to the right. Now when the string is analyzed, it's broken up to individual words known as tokens. And notice that the analyzer lower cases these tokens and it removes a punctuation. Now this process is known as the text analysis. Okay, so I'm going to maximize my repo, then scroll down to the inverted index section. So take a look at the request here. So here we're asking Elasticsearch to index the following document with the field description. And we want to assign this document an ID of one. So Elasticsearch will look at the field and see that it's a string. So it'll map this field as both text and keyword. Now when the field is mapped as type text, the string will pass through an analyzer. And once the string is analyzed, these individual tokens are stored in a sorted list called the inverted index. Now in an inverted index, each unique token is stored alphabetically along with its associated document ID. So the same process occurs every time you index a new document. So for example, let's say we indexed a new document with identical content as document one, but we gave this document an ID of two. 
Now this will go through the same process where it's split into individual tokens. But if these tokens already exist in an inverted index, only the document IDs are updated. Now, if we add another document with an ID of three with one new token, then the new token is added to the index and also the document IDs are updated for existing tokens. Now, this is what happens in the background when you index fields that are typed as text. Fields that are assigned the field type text are optimal for full text search. So let's take a look at this diagram here. The client is asking to fetch all documents containing the terms New or Zealand. And when this request is sent, Elasticsearch doesn't read through every document for the search terms. It goes straight to the inverted index and look up the search terms. Then it finds a matching document IDs and sends them back to the user. And the inverted index is a reason why Elasticsearch is able to search really fast. And since all the terms in the inverted index are lowercase, you can search for things in a non-case sensitive manner and still get the same results. Okay, so let's do another review. So here we're indexing three documents and each request has a field called country with a string value. And by default, the field country is mapped twice as text and keyword. Now text fields are analyzed and the tokens are stored in an inverted index. And this is great for full text search, but it's not optimized for performing aggregations, sorting, or exact searches. For these type of requests, Elasticsearch depends on the keyword field. And when a keyword field is created, the content of the field is not analyzed and is not stored in an inverted index. Instead, keyword uses a data structure called doc values to store data. So let's scroll down to zoom in on this part of the diagram. So for each document, the document ID along with its field value, the original string, are added to a table. And this data structure is called doc values. And the structure is optimal for aggregation, sorting, or exact searches. So if you're planning on performing any of these requests on a string field, you'll want to map the field as the keyword type. Now, when Elasticsearch dynamically creates a mapping for you, it doesn't know what you want to use the string for. So to be on the safe side, it maps all strings to both field types. But you don't always need both. In that case, the default setting is wasteful because it slows down indexing and takes up more disk space. So defining our own mapping could help us to store and search data more efficiently. Now defining our mapping takes more planning because we need to decide what type of requests we want to run on these fields. So we could designate which string fields will only be full text searchable or only be used in aggregation or be able to support both options. All right, so we just learned about how string fields are mapped in Elasticsearch. We specifically learned about two string field types called text and keyword, and how each field type is primed for different types of Elasticsearch requests. Now, this content is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticstack Part 5, and Part 5 is a full-length workshop where I talk about what a mapping is and how you can define your own mapping to make indexing and searching more efficient. We also talk about what steps you could take when you need to make changes to an existing mapping and learn about a feature called the Runtime field. This feature allows you to add fields to existing document without re-indexing your data. So if you prefer the full-length workshop format, check out the link on the screen, and the link is also included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana.